Okay, let's talk about our patient today. Our patient today is a dentist. Young lady, a preeminent lecturer. The dental hygienist from Bulgaria. Buffalo, New York. Atlanta, Oklahoma, Vancouver, Canada, Boston, Kansas City, San Francisco, Montreal, Munich, Germany, London, and Santa Maria, California. Now we're going to place 14 lumineers, 8 lumineers, 10 lumineers, 6 lumineers, 10, 2, 8, 8, 10, 10, 8, 10, 8 lumineers today on our patient. And now we're not treating teeth anymore. We're treating smiles. Isn't that beautiful? So let's look at the transformation from where we started and where we are. Our patient today is an example of that. Today we're going to place some uh, luminaires, uh, porcelain veneers that can be made thick or thin, on a patient uh, who's traveled uh, a couple thousand miles to get here from uh, Vancouver, Canada, and uh, she's sitting here in Santa Maria, California, because she wants to change the color of her teeth. If this goes good today, it's because of my assistant. Lisa has been with me for a long time. She's like my co-pilot, my navigator, and you know, she's my memory, she's everything here. And she's got everything set up. She's got the pieces of porcelain ready to go. And that's the way you should be before you do your first case. Now, if we drew circles around those groups, you find there's only four or five groups of material in there. So what Lisa has done, she has polished the patient's teeth with porcelain uh, polishing paste. And we use that because it has an enzyme in there to break down the plaque. So when I go to etch the tooth, we get exposed to the uh, uh, phosphoric acid uh, right away. If you use pumice, you just push the grease around. That's all plaque is, is grease. And she's put the porcelain conditioner on the porcelain, which is citric acid. Now, that's very important because that activates the serenade prime, which is a silane. Anytime you work with a pre-activated silane, you have a problem with shelf life because once it gets activated, it polymerizes with itself, copolymerizes. So we want to activate this just before we put it on the teeth. How many of you work with four power magnification? Anybody? Raise your hands if you do. Because those who have four power magnification should be sought out by the rest of the member of the audience, if anybody does, and let them tell you how good it is. Next one is, who uses a sapphire light? Anybody use a sapphire light? Raise your hands real high. It's a difference between when you work with a halogen light or some of these LED lights, it's like working with a slow speed handpiece compared to a high speed handpiece. And you'll watch me place eight or 10 of her porcelain veneers, lumineers, in about one minute. Impressions. I can't emphasize enough the importance of a good impression. It sounds simple, but uh, we like to recommend the Invisalign technique where you take a double wash. The other thing you want to look out for is what happens when the luminaire fits the model, doesn't fit the teeth. Maybe you took out the impression too soon and you got distortion. You can't tell when you're getting distortion. First thing I'm going to do is put some paint on dental dam, the same thing that you put around the gingival tissue when you're doing chair side bleaching. Only I'm going to put it on the lingual side and I'm placing it everywhere I don't want the ultra bond to stick to the teeth. And I'm placing this paint on dental dam on the lingual side. Close your eyes. And I expose it to the light for three seconds. Best way to protect your eyes is to close them. So I place the light Get a finger rest, hold it, and then I look away and close my eyes. When uh, patients have spaces between their teeth, you want to be careful you don't obliterate the space and have it run all the way from the lingual to the labial. Because if it does, what happens? You won't get the ultrabond on the tooth. There we go. But she doesn't have any diastemas today, so that's fortunate. 
Close your eyes. <clears throat> and I'll let you all take a look at what I'm doing here in just a moment. Just taking an extra minute or two to do that will save a lot of time in the cleanup on the lingual side. I'm uh, taking uh, etchin seal. Etchin seal is 35% phosphoric acid, medium viscosity with aluminum oxalate in it. And I apply that and brush it around, and I like the medium viscosity so it doesn't run all over the patient's throat. And it uh, gives me total control. And it's really useful with the aluminum oxalate when you're working with uh, your regular operative patients and you've got exposed dentin. If you get some acid on the dentin, the aluminum oxalate helps seal the dental tubules. And we'll start washing it off. You know, what's interesting is that a couple of young dentists, Dr. Gwinnett and Dr. Bonacore, in 1955, published an article about etching enamel and the establishment severely castigated them for dissolving that much enamel. Now I'm putting on a development by another dentist, Dr. Ray Bowen. And uh, Ray came to me in the early 80s and said, Bob, I've got this fantastic dentin bonding agent, but he said it has nine steps, nobody wants it. So we took out a license from the American Dental Association for Dr. Bowen's invention, and we reduced it to two bottles and one step. And the nice thing about Ray Bowen's system is it's light independent. In other words, it'll bond to any composite that you put onto it if you put this on the surface. And so we put these two solutions on for surface preparation. And then we're going to have one more solution on to protect this prepared surface. Which tooth? Lisa always calls out the name of the tooth. I don't like numbers because numbers are easy to get mixed up. And, but a right central is a right central, and you can't get that mixed up. So I'm going to put Supreme White on. And uh, we should probably look at her teeth because they're just beautiful. Uh, except they're the wrong shade. Now, why do we have two veneers, the same shade, look different? Here's why. We didn't have anything, no try-in pla paste placed on the left central. So light has a propensity to go through the medium that it's in in a straight angle until it, we exceed a, a, a phenomenon known as the critical angle. When light exceeds the critical angle, it bounces back. It doesn't go forward anymore. So the shade you've got on the left is a shade of the etched side of the porcelain. The shade you've got on the right is what it looks like with the Ultramon try-in paste on it. And now we're going to give the patient a choice. And we've got Supreme White and Lockout Supreme White. Okay. Now, one is Ultra Bond Supreme White, and the other is Blockout Supreme White. And the reason we have Blockout is when you have more of a shade that you want to mask, then you use the Blockout. It's very good for teeth when they have about three shades. Okay, here's a mirror. And you tell me which one you like better, the one on the left or the one on the right? The one on the left. Now, what I'd like to do is take Why don't you uh, give me a little tetrapic white and we'll just put that on there. And we're going to take a look at this now right here. And 
And I'm going to let you have another choice. Do you like the one on the right better or the one on the left better? The one on the right. This is the enamel shade Tetrapeak on the right, and it's really white. And we're going to mix that to take just the edge off of it with some block out about 50-50. So that got it even whiter, didn't it? Now Lisa is going to take Tenure S and clean out the try-in paste. It's resin. It's not aqueous, so she doesn't wash it out. And she uses what I'm using on the teeth to remove the try-in paste. you got to work kind of fast once you do this. So I've got these little sponges that are loaded with Tenure S. And I want to blow all this excess off here right now. Because if I leave the excess on with the Tenure S, when I go to seat the Lumineers, they, didn't, they wouldn't seat. And Lisa's going to start handing these to me using a device called the Lumigrip. Left central. And the Lumigrip was developed by a dentist in Pasadena, California. And it just carries it to the tooth, right central. And it's got a soft sponge on it. And I see these, I want to see excess coming around from all of the margins. Because when you don't have enough there, it looks just exactly the same as when you have just the right amount. And taking a long time to place these doesn't give you a better result. The fact is, it gives you a chance of having a worse result. Right second by cuspid. Need a left lateral. And then I'll take the light. Maybe a little bit. Lay on the one, it's fine. I place it and I see excess everywhere. Now I'll take the two millimeter tip close your eyes and the two millimeter tip for one second close your eyes and I gently place it make sure there's excess close your eyes and close your eyes. Close your eyes. And close your eyes. Okay. I won't touch that left lateral because when I do that one second, it might polymerize some of the ultrabond that's on the interproximal. And then I couldn't seat the next veneer. So I always stay one tooth distal. Here, I got to put a little bit more on there. Nope, I got enough. Okay. Second by cuspid. You just take and wipe off most of the excess. Not all. Close your eyes. That one millimeter tip right in the middle for one second just keeps this from slipping around. Close your eyes. And close your eyes. Now we're going to wipe off some of the excess that's here. And I've got a brush dipped in 10 year S. And I will take a cotton roll with 10 year S on one end. And we just go wipe off these surfaces. Close your eyes. Now we take the 9 millimeter tip and use 5 seconds on each tooth. 10 teeth, that's 50 seconds. And see, we're not rushing anything. We're just not wasting a lot of time in between each step. Close your 
close your eyes. Close your eyes. Actually, the patients don't have to close their eyes. It's for the people who are observing this. Now, what would happen if I forgot to expose the light to one of these? Guess what? That 10 year S would cause the ultra bond to set. Okay, now I'll let you take a look at the lingual side so you can see what that looks like. Kind of messy in there. And now we'll begin to take off the suction in here. Everybody's going to get a chance to look at this in a moment. And this tool I'm using is called the Sure 349. It's an orthodontic band seating instrument. And it's very important that you use this and not a hygienist scaling instrument. And the reason you want to use this instrument is because it never scratches porcelain. This is why it's so important to use the blue paint on dental dam because if you're using the white it would blend in with your ultra bond and you'd never know which was which there it goes you could really see the contrast between the tetracycline stained teeth and the color that we're going to change to okay now we're going to start finishing so I'm going to use an American football shaped diamond Okay, not a soccer football shaped diamond. And uh, this is uh, elliptical, and I'm going to blend the ultra bond, the serenade porcelain, and the enamel all together. They're one solid homogeneous mass, and I'm going to carve away what I don't want to be there. I want you to consider what you're witnessing. You're witnessing that when you have materials, you can change the paradigm. So, now I'm taking a long diamond and I'm removing the excess ultrabond around the gingival margins. Again, remember, there were no shoulders placed in her enamel. And so I want to be very careful here when I take this out. This is why four power is so important right in here because I get right next to the gingival tissue. And if I didn't have four power magnification, I wouldn't be able to see with as much discrimination as I can. Now as I'm getting back on this second bicuspid, this is where this four power magnification at 15 inches is really important because I'm working with direct vision And so I just want to make sure that I'm removing ultrabond in between all of these teeth. Okay, let's take a look at the occlusion. 
close. Now grind your teeth around. So we're going to look for high spots in there. Do you feel any high spots in there? In the front? Okay. And that's where you want to rub it with your marking paper. It's nice to have a patient that's a dentist. Open wide. Okay. Now, oh, look at that down here. See? Now, if I let her go home, she'd knock those off. So what you want to see is contact on the natural teeth not on the porcelain. Now we're going to take off some more because you have to be able to develop an envelope of excursion. And if you don't do that, you're going to have a lot of trouble. And there's a mark over here heavy on the porcelain on this cuspid. So we want to blend that. If I want to take off as much as I can on the top, and then I'll get to the bottom. Now, all the way back to the second molar, I can see marks in centric, and I see the marks on the lateral sides, but you don't ever want to see a lot of heavy marks on the edges of the porcelain, because that can cause it to chip and fracture. I'm going to take a little off these lower anterior teeth. And I don't shorten them in length. I take it off of the labial surface so it'll blend better. And once again, if you feel anything uncomfortable, you should raise your left hand right away or tell me. Close. Grind around. Now you're probably wondering, how are we going to open these contacts? And so I take this little serry saw, very thin, and it's in that finishing kit. And I go between the teeth. And if I have a lot of ultrabond in there and I can't saw anymore, I stop and I rock. Okay? And now I open that contact. And we go to the next tooth. We do the same thing. First I saw. And if it gets a little tougher, then I stop and I make an icebreaker out of uh, my saw. So you see how I open those contacts. Now we'll take a seri sander. And this is a diamond, safe-sided diamond. And I go through because when I went through with the saw, that would leave rough edges where I had the ultrabond. And then I take the seri sander. Orthodontists use this, and I just have it in this holder. It makes it more convenient. I just go through these contacts. And I'm only going to show you a few of them because it's really boring watching me open contacts. But I want to prove to you that you don't need to have your matrices to keep them open because you open them after you place it. Okay, and let's take a last look at our patient. And let's take a look at how she looked before. Back. Okay. I'm Dr. Sue. I'm com I, ca I come from the Vancouver, Canada. Um, I've been practicing uh, for about eight years now. Um, I heard about Lumineer through uh, friends, 
and、uh, that's why I decided to take some courses. And the first course I just took was in Vancouver, and that really excited me because I, I this really opened my eyes. So I decided to take the the course here in、uh, uh, the life placement course in Santa Maria. And I was so happy that I actually came down in March, and、uh, and then I was very happy again to get on the list for for Dr. Ibsen to place a room here for me. So that's why I'm here in Santa Maria for the second time.、Um, I got tetracycline since I was little.、Um, it, it, you can even see the tetracycline on my first molars. So I, it was like I probably dosed with tetracycline since I was like. Two or three years old, so I wasn't very happy with the color of my tea, and I don't really smile with my tea shone. So、um, I've been looking for stuff like could actually change the color of my tea.、Um, but because I was born in Taiwan, there's no such things, and we immigrant to Central America, and it was even worse. And and that's after I moved to Canada, we get exposed to more. Dental education, so decided to become a dentist.、Um, back in school, the、uh, the professor actually tried to bleach my teeth.、Uh, we try all kind of bleaching materials,、uh, even in office. We talk about all different bleaching stuff. I tried.、Um, it lightened a little bit, but not to the point that I was happy with my smile. So, I was very. Self-conscious about my smiles. I I didn't smile in my grad picture. I don't smile in my wedding pictures. So up to I I found out about Lumineer, and I said this is something what I want. So that's why I took the course, and it really changed my life from the point that, from the moment that Dr. Ibsen put it, them in, and I was crying and I was so happy about this. No, they actually the the、uh, I wouldn't. Grab my tea. That's what the professor actually offered to uh, place twenty uh, uh, veneer for me back in school, and, and I say no. I I got healthy tea. I I don't them I don't want them to grind down because uh, um, not just because I want my for, for the color to be whiter. It's not worth it. So Lumia really changed my life. Um, I I think having Lumineer myself, it's definitely going to help me、uh, to help other patients because there's already patient asking about it.、Uh, we put posts on the wall and、uh, patient reads about it and they have questions. And although they still have a little doubts, but I I'm sure by looking at me having done myself, that is going to encourage more patient and do the Lumineer rather than the conventional veneer. Because a lot of people are asking about non-prep、uh, veneer, which is luminaires.